okay, so let's get started. Uh, my name is Krishnan Tirakonda. I am a PME, technical marketing engineer with the MIG automation team focusing on Crossbook products. And I'm joined uh, with my colleague, Sujay Murthy, who is also a TME in the same team. And we are focusing on automation products for um, large-scale networks. Our business unit in Cisco is called uh, Mass Scale Infrastructure Group. Um, the topic is how to use CNC with uh, an existing NSO package. And uh, so let's get started. Uh, so what we'll do is uh, a little bit shorter overview of CNC uh, because most of you were there in the earlier, uh, you know, presentation just uh, like two before this one, uh, and then we'll get into what we mean by greenfield and brownfield, a little bit of clarification, and then we will get into what is needed um, on the NSO side, and then what is needed on the CNC side. And finally, a walkthrough of an uh, example, uh, you know, that we we uh, use from the NSO uh, documentation, that is the LTVP package, um, and then we will uh, show that working with CNC. So that's the goal, and uh, you know, I'll cover the first part, first a little bit, and then I'll hand off to Sujay to do the rest. Um, so a little bit of recap, uh, in case you missed it, but uh, if you were there, just a, uh, you know, recap. Um, so CNC is a vertical uh, solution, right, uh, focusing on not only provisioning, but also service uh, tra traffic engineering, uh, visualization, real-time optimization, service assurance, and all the other things that you need to manage your network after you provision it, right? So provisioning is also included, but it, it, it does use NSO underneath, um, and then it has integration with SRPCE and the uh, telemetry collection layer, to get bandwidth uh, you know, information and then do path control and path calculation. Uh, the main driver is that you know, not only now we can provision VPNs, but with segment routing and its source routing paradigm, you want to have more fine-grained uh, path control uh, and uh, also bandwidth-aware path control, right? You can do a lot of fancy things with uh, you know, things like congestion mitigation uh, and uh, uh, tactical, what we call as traffic engineering, which is when some things happen, you want to move your traffic from here to there. Um, besides with traffic engineering and segment routing, you can do very uh, fine-grained control, not only, uh, you know, typical things that people ask for are disjointness uh, for a service, uh, low latency is another one, or uh, restrict the paths for a particular service to a subset of links, right? Those links may be like, you know, within country, don't cross international borders, or use only links that have MACSEC, you know, that could be a property that you put. And so those things are very important as we go on. And with 5G and slicing, segment routing is being looked at as one of the ways in which you can implement slicing in the transport layer, right, between your radio network and your uh, packet core. So, um, in terms of what you get when you provision, uh, when you get uh, CNC, so um, uh, again, this is a little bit of repeat, but I want to uh, emphasize certain different points in this uh, talk. So we do ship a NSO function pack. We, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we do use NSO to do the provisioning piece, um, and the NSO function packs that we ship with the product has a SRT core function pack, and it comes with example function packs for L2 and L3 VPN as well as RSVPT. The expectation is that the example function packs can be used by our customers, and then they can uh, basically, uh, you know, uh, modify, extend, or even trim it down to what they want, right? So uh, L2 and L3 VPNs are pretty uh, flexible. There are different flavors of L2 VPN, and even with L3 VPN, there are quite a bit of knobs, and you may want to restrict it to just what you want to use. Besides that, we also, uh, you know, verify and uh, interrupt between all um, you know, supported XR and XD platforms, and there's a matrix available as a starting point. Now, um, I, I won't go over the optional packages. Um, I'll just switch to a little bit of a brief overview uh, of, um, of CNC. Uh, let me share a different demo, um, browser. So this is CNC. Uh, that, uh, you know, is standard CNC, right? So as you can see here, we have a dashboard, and in the last presentation also I showed it, um, there's a service and traffic engineering, and, uh, you know, the bottom piece of this is provisioning. So we go to provisioning, you see all the, uh, you know, standard 
packages that we ship with the with the product. Uh, segment routing is here, and then you have L3 and L2 VPN. And I have an instance of L2 VPN provisioned. Uh, this is again based on the TSDN example function pack that ships with the with the product. And uh, the expectation is, like I said, normally that you would take this and extend it, right? And this is the visualization that you get with it. And there are specific things that we put in the visualization layer that is aware in terms of integrating with NSO layer, right? Now, the question becomes, um, I want to show you one more thing before we move on, is that we can actually go and integrate with the underlay policies that this particular VPN is using, right? So this, uh, this set of three PEs, um, three sites in this L3 VPN are actually bound in a full mesh uh, network uh, in terms of underlay uh, paths, right? So you can see these are the SRT policies um, that are actually in play for this particular uh, customer, right? These are the exact paths that will go based on the segment routing TE. Um, so now switching back to the slide, uh, what I want to sh uh, you know show you was that this is how it looks as you know with using all the parts from the uh, from the standard shipped TSDN. But what we want to show in this particular demo is that if you have already a, a package that you've already deployed, um, right, a lot of our customers already have NSO, they have built NSO packages and they're deploying VPN, right? How do you integrate that with, uh, with CNC so that you can actually get the benefit of your current uh, NSO deployment, but also get, start uh, you know, getting a, a broader uh, experience and benefit from the CNC functionality? So that's going to be the rest of the focus. Uh, before we go on, I think all of us know that anytime we customize, because we, uh, in, the, in the product team, we verify what we are putting in the product. But when you start using your own products, you, uh, your own developed uh, packages, you may want to verify, test, and uh, you know, make sure that the integration works. Of course, our Cisco professional services teams will, will help with that. Um, one thing key to note, uh, let me actually, I forgot to maximize. Um, so one thing key to, um, uh, to clarify or be on the same page is what do we mean by greenfield and brownfield, right? So the three scenarios that we can think of is that the network itself is new, right? A greenfield network, all the routers are being shipped, you know, brand new, they're being installed, there's no configs on it. And then you're adding CNC, which includes also an NSO with it, right? All of that's uh, new, right? In this case, you will take the examples that are in the TSDN, um, you know, function packages, in the set of TSDN function packs, and you will extend it to any kind of variations you want, right? That's the simplest one. The second one uh, is uh, that you have um, CNC, uh, sorry, you have a network, you don't have CNC, you don't have an SO, right? But you do have VPNs and things deployed either using your own tools or some other vendor provisioning tools, right? Now, when you introduce CNC and NSO, you have to do a migration of those configs, uh, something that we call a service discovery and reconciliation. So basically, uh, we have to figure out what is already on the device as a VPN config and create the same northbound state right on the NSO. So we have to instantiate the models with uh, you know no networking and then uh, make sure that they are reconciled. That means NSO will generate the exact same configs, and at that point, NSO is uh, you know, have the service state uh, for the what is on the device. And at that point, introduction of CNC is easy because CNC sits on top of the northbound interface of an SO, right? So that's the second one. The third one is what we are going to talk about, which is uh, there is already an NSO that you're deploying with a package, right? You're already creating VPNs through NSO. Now you want to add CNC on top. So now we just need to teach CNC to uh, understand the model that is on NSO, but also we need to add some things on the NSO side and we'll go into detail in this session, right? So that's the focus now. The main benefit is, again, to reiterate, you have an SO and doing VPNs, but you want to go to a CNC. So we're trying to show you how to do that. Um, at this point, I'll hand it off to my colleague, Sujay, to, uh, to share uh, and continue the, the implementation. So, so as we saw with the introduction of what CNC is and the support for greenfield and brownfield networks, what we want to focus on in this session is there have been various asks on customers where they have NSO, they have their VPN service models that have been custom built for their use cases. So what is that they can do with CNC? So the objective is to actually take those services and create those visualization and provisioning from their VPN services 
so they could continue with business as usual, doing their CRUD operations, and also leverage the benefits of what CNC has to offer with service health, closed loop automation, like local congestion mitigation or bandwidth on demand. So let's look at how uh, the customers have, right? Currently, customers have this implementation where they've developed their own MPLS VPN examples or um, service packs or function packs to deploy uh, VPNs on their network uh, through various uh, use cases and then use the northbound OSS systems like some form of BPA or right and chill or any workflow engines that you could use to continue provisioning your services. So from here, if somebody wants to integrate CNC is what is needed. Right, so so this is typically a CNC NSO brownfield use case, which is brownfield to CNC, but then uh, the service models are there on NSO, the network is already provisioned with uh, VPN services. So what is needed on NSO side first, right? Um, on the NSO, uh, you need to generate those plan and notifications. Plan is basically a life cycle on the service and notifications is your state changes. So somebody listening on northbound can, uh, understand what is the changes that have been going in, whether there are new services created, updated, or deleted. Now, when we create a legacy service, right? Like we create a typical uh, service data on NSO, but there is no plan or notification that is generated for VPN service. That's what most of the legacy deployments have been where they've developed service packs on NSO using the legacy features, developing your uh, VPN function pack models, but you don't have any sort of plan or notification that can be generated from the service. So we have a package, separate package that is called the external plan package. The objective of this package is to attach this plan service package to any existing VPN services. There are no modifications needed on your existing service packs. Like if your layer three VPN or layer two VPN services have been developed, there are no changes needed on those packages. All you'll have to do is define your plan structure which is in form of a bootstrap data and do a redeploy on the services that I will show in the demo how this works and generate those plan notifications uh, towards your services. This idea is basically from the nano services, but the recommendation from the NSO platform is also to move towards nano-based services as an implementation, which offers out of the box these features for plan and notification services for lifecycle management. So when we configure a bootstrap plan outline, once you have your package loaded, um, you create the external plan outline, which says, what is the service X path? That is to which service I need to generate this plan outline. Uh, what are the keys? Like whether it's a name of the service uh, to the key reference and where the plan should be located. Now this plan could be located as part of a different path or as part of your existing service path if you wanna make a change on the package. And the three components would define is what I want to see as part of my plan states, like where a component for self, which will show the overall status of the service. Uh, each components uh, for endpoints like CE endpoints in my VPN use cases, which we have both PE and CE endpoints. Can I look at the status for each of the CE endpoint on the service? And similarly for L3 VPN endpoints PE, where I could look at the status for each endpoint PEs on the service. The extending visualization, so once we bring this external plan package, the second option is to extend your CAT function pack uh, development workflow. That is, you write your NSO service package models, which you have it already in your NSO service. There is a CAT function pack that resides on top of CNC, where you build your inventory plugin and your uh, overlay plugin which builds your plugin models that will integrate with your existing NSO Brownfield services. This will be available as part of a tooling functionality that is the SDK uh, under the CAT function pack development. And you could integrate any service models uh, from your NSO to deploy that under the CAT uh, function pack. So let's look at the overall workflow. So this is where users have started, where we see that the customer has this VPN service models being deployed on XR and XCCLIs through some nets. Now they want to bring in CNC, like right? as in the use case, I want to bring CNC. So what we need is we need to generate the service data. We looked at uh, that we want to generate the plan for the services and the notifications for the lifecycle of the service. That is, 
any state changes, even if a customer is trying to still use their existing northbound OSS systems to create, update, or delete operations, the CNC is notified of these state changes. Right, so step one, uh, attaching the NSO plan and notification, and second is to extend the overlay plugin. But let's see all of this in, in action. Uh, so what I plan to show is a demo of a brownfield VPN package where I would like to show is we have a current NSO service that is not visible on CNC. And then I attach the bootstrap uh, data for the plan to say where the plan data should be generated and the respective notifications on the plan component of the service and redeploy the service to generate that data. Visualize the services on CNC and then continue using CNC's APIs to make updates on their existing service models. Right, so let me switch panes here to my screen. So this is the intent of uh, on the CNC that I'm seeing right now, right? On, on the CNC, I have VPN 101, L2 VPN TLDP, which I've deployed through the TSDN function pack that is available out of the box from the Crosswork Network Controller. And I also have something from the NSO that have been already created, uh, like the Volvo VPN service, that is a common L3 VPN examples that we have taken from the NSO's examples use case, to say that there is a Volvo VPN service that is created outside the CNC's um, function pack models. Right. So in this case, what I have to do is I need to first load the bootstrap data so that I can generate the plan component. So what I would do here is, in this case, load my bootstrap data for the service. Right, uh, The bootstrap data defines the plan outline, where the plan component are for service keys, the component for PE and uh, CE endpoints. Um, so it's just a bootstrap data commit, so it wouldn't take much time. So I go ahead and do a commit on the service. And what I would now go back and do is, now since I don't see the VPN service models here, the VPN that is being provisioned on NSO available for visualization here on service, while I could see the other service models. Like the VPN, this is the custom VPN service model, and we have something on the TSDN and the function pack service models that we are right now seeing on CNC, which is VPN 101 from L3 VPN network. So what I would do is, since all these are coexisting with both the packages, I'll go ahead and do a redeploy on the service so that my plan and notification data for the service is generated. And I should start seeing that um, notification models on the CNC UI once it is redeployed. So if I do a refresh here on the service, I should be able to see that the Volvo VPN service was created. Now, this is where the integration has happened. We used the CAT SDK plugin to show the overlay components. And if I click on the VPN service models, I can look at, okay, what are the endpoints that's connected? What is the route target to which uh, the service is defined? And also, I have leveraged the transport side capabilities with using uh, the uh, NSO-based VPN service model, but which is not done by the function pack services. So this is the view, config view of the data of the service that was created. And on the transport side, I've already had the SRT tunnels that were uh, configured uh, on the network. So when I, I can look at similarly, the, the nodes transport between both the topologies and, and look at the paths that the tunnels are being created for this VPN service model. Right, and, uh, and you can also look at the provisioning screen. So the provisioning screen is basically here, which shows that there's a demo L3 VPN construct that was developed through the CAT SDK plugin, which shows where this component of the service will reside. So as we see here, there are other existing service models that uh, the CNC uses for RSVPT, SRT tunnels, layer three VPN or layer two VPN. I can also create a similar list of those, any custom modified services under demo L3 VPN, and I can do the provisioning from these use cases. Right. So. So the idea is uh, users are now able to see the services that were provisioned on uh, NSO, uh, visualized on CNC. And we could either use the APIs from CNC to modify those services, or you could continue using your NSO's northbound service models for any of those changes. But for this use case, what we would like to show is, now I would go ahead and modify the service on the current service model from CNC, and uh, see the start uh, status that has changed, uh, the visualization that would change for the service models. 
So my use case here is for an update is to add a third VPN node between uh, on the VPN service where I can import the data that was pre-created from the service model and I can do a dry run. CNC has most of these capabilities from what you use on NSO to look at your service models, look at the configuration that is pushed to the network. And I can see that there is a config which is pushed towards node two, which is the CPE and towards node three, which is the device, uh, which is the other PE and creating your route target and your route policies for the service. Right, so I'll close this on the endpoint and I'll do a comment. So this commit uh, will take me to the similar NSO operation model. It will call the NSO APIs to commit the service. And once this service is committed, it is provisioned. We can look at the visualization screen to say what the configs have been changed, how the visualization has changed, and on the transport side, what the tunnels have been created for the service. Right, so on this part of the service is created. I'll go back to the VPN services view to look at what has been changed on the VPN service models, right? So if you see on the Volvo service, I've added a node three element. The node three is the new node that was updated as part of the NSO service function pack models, updating here to show the visualization screen. And a similar view available as we have seen before, uh, all the config data for the service are available here to see what is provisioned from the NSO service intent. And on the transport side, now we will see that there are six new tunnels that have been formed, where now we have the node three added to your colors and your uh, services will now do the show the visualization from all your head end to endpoint tunnels that you could see within the service. And similarly, this is expandable. From here, you could also leverage to see what are other CNC's capabilities. Like I would like to see what are the metrics that uh, the path has taken. So I could enable the metrics on the path and see what are the uh, the delay and the latency that is available on each of the links uh, between the network. Right, so so this this flexibility is really easier to consume with the customization packages that are available uh, for customers to deploy their existing NSO VPN service packs and and provision their services um, on on NSO, do an updates from CNC, and use the visualization capabilities for the service. And also this, this VPN service model, you could also filter that based on your types, like whether you're using your function pack service models or your custom service pack function models, you could filter on the services to see the list of those services that are being configured. Right, so this is uh, all on, on the demo part that um, we had to show. So what are the key takeaways that we wanna ensure from CNC that customers have is this VPN services can be extended. There is actually work involved that we see, uh, but we have those tools in place to do NSO and CAT visualization uh, to use the external plan package to develop or generate those plan and notifications, use the CAT SDK plugins to generate your service metadata for the service. Uh, CNC can be integrated on top of an existing NSO for Brownfield VPN services. And as always, there's the, the help from the CX or the Cisco professional services team that can help you develop these plugins once and so that you could leverage on CNC your uh, continuous deployments. Right, so that's all I had. Uh, we have the references section here to say we have shared the sample VPN function pack models that we used as part of the NCS examples. If anyone wants to try out, uh, there's a good documentation on the Crosswork Network Controller product information, but please feel free to reach out to us, send us an email on cncrequest.com if you need more details on how to do this customization, and we are happy to get in touch with you for anything that is needed. Thank you for your time and thanks for listening. Thank you, guys. So do we have any, any questions for the team? So I understand that um, customers can do changes and CX have services, so we have all the options to make customizations, if you like, right? Um, the NSO APIs, are those in any way hidden or abstracted away or can you access them as easy as, as always? 
Yes, Nicholas, that's that's available through CNC proxy APIs. Uh, the CNC is an abstraction on top of NSO APIs, so it will call the CNC APIs uh, from the CNC. Okay. NSO APIs from CNC. Great. So I suggest you um, go and check the examples out and, and uh, try it. With that, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Dean. Okay. Thanks, Nicholas.